Michelle from New Theory. I'm with Next Shift Bait. And to start off, introduce yourselves. I'm Mike Wilson. I'm Derek Wilson. I do the screaming or unclean vocals, as you would like to call it, in Makeshift Fate. I'm Ryan. I play guitar for Makeshift Fate. How did you guys get started into music? Did you always believe you'd be a musician, or were there other things that held your passion? There was uh, other things that helped my passion. Art, uh, drawing was one giant passion I had, and then acting was one giant passion I had. But music runs in my family, and it just took over from then. Yeah, my family is just a big, big music family. That's all we do. It's music. That's how I got into it. I, I love it. I absolutely love music. Yeah. Who or what are your inspirations for your music, and why? Uh, my inspirations go from from Autumn to Ashes to Dead Poetic to uh, a 1960s band called The Searchers. Ooh, this is a tough one. I got so there are so many. Uh, uh, I mean, well, I started with System of a Down. I mean, System of a Down, Disturbed, uh, Day to Remember, of course. Uh, Ask Alexandria, even though, yeah, stuff, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's just, there's just a lot. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really have, there's a car. Yeah. Uh, Let's not get that over. Yeah, please. Okay. What does it mean to, what does it mean to you to see, or when you see people react positively to your music? It feels great. It absolutely, absolutely blows love it. my mind, like, uh, uh, it's Logan, just a really good feeling. Logan, uh, what's his last name? Uh, Abdo. I don't know. Logan Abdo, uh, he did a drum cover of our song Lost in Exile, and that just blew my mind to have someone so passionate about music to do a drum cover of our music. It, it, it's, it, it's even better when someone's standing up front and singing your, your lyrics. And like, we're just a local band, and no one knows us, you know? Yeah. Like, it feels good. Like, this guy here. <laughs> This guy here, this that fool who just ran past. That's Tommy Zane. He's on, right here. <laughs> oh shit! He's okay. on our. This is like live, so this is like one take. Shit, that's, this is, that's actually scary. This is Tommy Zane this from Dormavelia. Dorma vagina, Dorma vegeta. Eat your Dorma vegetables. <laughs> Got it. Nailed it. First take. Get the fuck out of here. And I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> He's a very good friend of ours who. Uh, I asked him to do some guest vocals because he's a lot better vocalist than I am, and I can guarantee that. <laughs> well, uh, what about the haters? What do you have to say to them if you have anything to say? I mean, to the haters, I just have to say, you fuel us. You yeah. give us passion to write yeah. better music, to do better, and to continue to write music. Are your lyrics written specifically to target specific ideas or topics? Um, or are they constructed in a way that they can be purposely interpreted differently with each person so they can use it? I um, write uh, more they, to whatever they. Want. The writing style that I use is uh, poetic writing, to do uh, so that way the people can feel the feelings that I have. Like our song Skinwalker, I took it from a Native American legend about the shamans that they have for uh, kids who. Uh, change themselves for each group that they hang out with instead of being themselves instead of being the dorky nerdy or preppy person that they truly are instead of expressing themselves in that song I'm expressing how I'm seeing these kids nowadays or people just change themselves in front of my eyes and acting differently in front of different groups of people what does makeshift fate mean I mean, it literally <laughs> means um, makeshift is pretty much we had an idea to put out our music, put out our feelings for uh, people to understand what we go through, what they go through, saying that they're not alone, that we make our own fate in life, that no matter what you do, we will support you no matter what, be it good or bad, mostly good. We can't have bad decisions going on. What was writing Last in Exile like? And are you currently writing a new album? Uh, 
we are currently writing a new album. It's going slower than we anticipated. Well, that's because we're still in progress. So we're we had a little issue with uh, the members that we had, and we took care of it. And we're looking at a business standpoint, and we're going to continue. Uh, for uh, writing Lost in Exile, he wrote all the instrumentals except for Lost in Exile, and the credit goes to the people who wrote the other songs. Yeah, credit is where they, they, know, they know who they are. <coughs> I'm not going to list any names. And uh, for the writing process for the lyrics, uh, me and Ethan just took our uh, passion, what we were feeling at the time, to write the lyrics out. Are there any emotional roots to your songs that you'd like to discuss? Um, the song Lex Lost in Exile, I wrote that for a, an ex-bandmate who was uh, addicted to drugs. Like, I was in a band called, and they called us Dreamers, in which I love him to death, I wish him good, and he's doing good, he's doing a lot better. It's just, I wrote that song for him to say, hey, get your life together. Because he put the spark of music back in my life whenever I thought everything was lost and gone. And he just kept fueling my passion for music. As far as the, as far as the instrumentals go, I, whatever I was feeling at the time is how I wrote that song. Like, uh, uh, the Leaves of Disease and Steadfast are a lot heavier than all the other ones. And at that time I was just depressed and really stressed and all that good stuff so I had to express myself music. yeah okay do you guys have any interesting hobbies outside of music um I'm a giant DC nerd so I buy every single DC item that comes out the day it comes out and I'm broke because of it <laughs> yeah. Aquaman <laughs> darn you Aquaman <laughs> oh man I uh Huge video game nerd. Huge video game nerd. I'm a, I'm a drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so am I sad um, to get up. I mean, I just like to have a good time. I like to enjoy myself and people that I love around me. So. Most embarrassing moment on stage? Um. For me, it would have to be at. Um, is this for like makes your fate, or is this just our whole music career? It could be your All right. Uh, for me, since Makes Your Fate was my first live band that I got to perform in, uh, our show on December 13th at the Cup of Flow, I um, went into the mosh pit and I was getting out and I got pushed and I was falling backwards towards the stage, almost pretty much killing my back. But someone saved me. I can't remember his name. You know, I love you for saving me. That would have to be my most embarrassing moment on stage. I've got a few. <laughs> Let me go ahead. I fell Walk. off the stage at the old drunk horse. I was really drunk, though. I remember so, that. Um, I tripped over Jason so many times. So many times. Um, I tripped over my own. Oh, at the rock shop. I was all right. So okay. So I can't remember what song it was. We were. Uh, it was during a breakdown, and I didn't have a wireless at the time, so I was jumping, and I came down straight on my cord, and the whole like my whole cab just went whoop, just cut everything out. I thought it was broken. I was freaking out. Oh oh, and I did. Oh, you remember this the guitar spin I did over here? My guitar just went whoop. <laughs> You didn't have guitar lock. Oh, uh, strap no, locks. I, had, I had guitar. I had you strap, didn't have lock. strap locks. No, though. I did have strap locks. The fucking screw came out. Wait, 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 When you were in uh, Frost Word. Yeah. Uh, no, there was one. I think I it was the Am I Love show. Oh, was it that one? Yeah. No, uh, it was Drunk Wars. Yeah. No. Uh, it, there was like a part where, in, in his previous band called Frost Word, there was a part where they hit like a sampler and it started playing like this like kind of beat. And then he was just like, oh shit, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm fuck, sorry. And just like went back into breakdown. And like, I think they told me, was that intentional, dude? Did you no, are you it? talking about the phone call? <laughs> the fake phone call? Yeah, that one's like, was that on the same <laughs> show too? Like, yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Like I, was like, I was like, they're fucking done. Dude, they're dude no, over. we had just written that song. And I was like, 
We got to this one point, and I'm just like, fuck. I don't remember. Oh, shit. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I'm sitting there. Everyone's looking at me. I'm just like, oh, yeah. Okay. The tears are coming out. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Do you guys like to pull pranks on each other? Oh, God, yes. I've crop dusted this guy so many times. And I have this little uh, thing due to my surgery on my esophagus that he uh, absolutely does I not like. He can't burp. <laughs> it's disgusting. Like, do it. Just do something. Oh, oh my god. Oh. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, so weird. It's called uh, an infection, dude. Get that shit checked, dude. Uh, stop! stop dude. <laughs> Sorry, that's from. You need to get that checked. <laughs> I, have a, I have half an esophagus. <laughs> I have half an esophagus. You got a little flap. <laughs> uh, they scraped away half of my esophagus and put a flap because I wasn't able to eat for six months. I have an esophageal disease for the rest of my life called accolation. Oh, that's so metal. Do you guys have any funny stories you'd like to share with your fans? The studio stories? <laughs> Schmeagel. The Spiegel and God. <laughs> Freaking, uh, uh, who for me? Uh, um, in the studio, uh, we had an interview with Smeagol and Gollum because I can do voice impersonation of Smeagol and Gollum. And um, our producer at the time, who... <laughs> Jose, I love you to death, but holy crap, you put me through. We hell. I think we... I think we laughed at that. We All right, we had to stop recording, and we laughed for literally like an hour straight. Just, we could not stop. Jose he was Gonzalez. like, he was fucking with it too. He was fucking with it too. Like he would slow it down, speed it up. So it's like, <laughs> so like, are you talking about Jose and Sanford? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did shit like that to us all the time. <laughs> I know, like I, I was doing like this, <laughs> and then um, I was like, I love fish. I really love fish. And then uh, Jose was like, so uh, what do you think about uh, the one ring? He's like, the ring, my precious, there it's mine. Fuck, sweet, I'm like, <laughs> And that, I think, is still saved to this day. Probably. So funny have story about bonus. my hand, actually. Um, two nights ago, <laughs> at the Drunk Horse Pub, they have this uh, punching, punching, bag, punching bag game where you got to punch it and get a high score. Uh, I decided to punch it because I was angry, didn't want to hit anybody, so I thought it'd be nice to punch something that's meant to be hit. So I hit it, I followed through, and I hit the machine, and my hand is really fucked up. I don't, I don't know how I played tonight, I really don't. Neither do I, but you did beautiful. Except for the fact, except for the fact that my wireless was dying and it kept going in and out. We should have bought batteries. We should have bought batteries. <laughs> So, I think I think of one. Captain. Like, is there one greatest fan that sticks out in your memory? Oh God. One greatest fan. Christopher Curtis. Christopher Curtis is one of them. Logan. Uh, Logan A. Logan, Logan A. Logan A. Logan A. Let's just go ahead and say uh, we can't say his last name. Um, Zoe Burt. <laughs> Zoe Burt, she's from England, she supports the front. Uh, the front. The front. 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 Sorry, Zoe, if you watch this. Um, there's another one that we had. <laughs> she's a fan. I have a huge ass fan of makeshift myself. Speak louder. I have a huge ass fan of makeshift yeah, my, it. myself. That's a growl. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, then there's one more fan. There's someone who's one of me who gets all the other stuff. We have people from like they have, we have people like Italy, England, like one not of, United States based, but a, like other countries <laughs> around the world is like loving our stuff and we don't know why. <laughs> We think I mean, we suck. you said it. I didn't say it. We think we suck, but she says we're great. No, I think you she suck. said it, not us. What would you like to say to your fans on New Fury? Um, thank you for sticking by us. Through. We love you. 
We love you so, so, so much. You guys support us in our darkest times that we've had recently with uh, member changes, new lineups, in which each band goes through every lineup change that's possible. And new music coming soon. Very soon, if you like our teaser that we posted on Facebook. All right, that's Makeshift Fate. I'm Annabelle from New Fury. Thanks for watching.